Hi folks, so today is uh, Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022 and uh, we're about to go skating on the Ottawa Canal. Now yesterday and the day before were beautiful sunny days. Today it's really uh, cloudy and this afternoon it's supposed to maybe be like wet snow and they say maybe chances of freezing rain. So I wanna get some skating done this morning before the precipitation comes and show you guys what Nordic skating is like on the Ottawa Canal. So we're just getting up to the, uh, the entrance to the canal. And I'll show you what it looks like in a second. So here's the, of the multiple entrances onto the canal, this is one that I, I like using, it's more or less in the middle. So the canal is something like 7.8 kilometers long, and this is around the, uh, the midway mark, down to the right, end up going close to the Ottawa University and then downtown. Uh, here across, across the way there you've got what uh, used to be called Lansdowne Park and it's now TD Place or something like that where the uh, CFL football team plays and the big uh, stadium there underneath has the uh, ice rink for the uh, OHL Ottawa 67's hockey team and to the left it's the canal going towards uh, Dow's Lake and Carleton University. So we're going to cross and go over to the to the hills and then the, the benches. Nobody on that side, nobody on this side, we're good to go. So today they say the conditions on the ice surf is fair. It's about minus one degree, so it's uh, probably a little on the soft side, but that's okay. Nobody's, very few people are on it right now, so it's not all hacked up yet. When I go uh, skating on the canal, I always take this bag with me, and in the bag, I've always got the same things here. I got my helmet, which I, I recommend everybody go on the, who skates, whether it's outdoors or indoors, always should wear a helmet. Unfortunately, I, I think many people don't, and it's, uh, it's a safety issue, you know. And then these are my, my skating, skating boots, and these are the Nordic skates that I bought a couple of years ago. Uh, I got these ones used on Kijiji and uh, they're amazing, you know. They're like uh, a foot and a half long and the advantage of this over standard, you know, hockey skates, right, is that you end up with less effort going further and far farther with each stride and you also glide over the imperfections on the ice so much so much easier. Um, with hockey skates I found that you know if you don't pay any attention to the the surface you can easily you know bump into uh, a situation where your your blade falls into a crack. Uh, there's a guy off in the distance who's got the, the Nordic skates. Look at him go. You know? Whereas uh, with the hockey skates, you know, you can end up going into a crack or if there's a slight imperfection and a bump in the ice, you fall over and you always end up regretting it. I spoke to the guys, uh, the first aid guys, and they, they said that the most common injuries are wrist, wrist, uh, wrist injuries, like broken wrist and stuff from people falling over. Now with the uh, 
the skates, uh, Nordic blades, what you need is um, skate ski. These are skate ski boots. These are like uh, cross country ski boots, but they have extra ankle support, and that's really important. And what happens is, just like a cross country ski, you end up, you know, latching on to the skate with that, and your heel is loose and goes up and down. Um, but with without the uh, ankle support, you want to be able to stand up straight. So I'll put these on and show you what it's like. So here's my boot uh, that's been put on, and I just attached the uh, the blade. And you see here, it's it's loose, but it's attached at the front just like uh, a, you know standard cross country ski binding. And this skate is going to allow me to glide over all the imperfections and go a lot smoother uh, across the ice. So I'm just going to get set up. Now I always bring a bag and put my my uh, shoes in there. A lot of people, you know, they just leave like their, their shoes around, but uh, I don't think that's... Uh, necessarily a good good thing because if you have an accident at some point you need to get off the ice and you know walk away like you need your shoes and uh, I don't want to say anybody steals but from time to time one can imagine that some some people might do that now there are some people with some Nordic skates looking looking good and there's somebody with regular skates so I'm just gonna get set up here put on my helmet and we're gonna rock and roll well so here we are I got my skates on and we're ready to we're ready to go so if I if I fall down don't laugh I'm still I'm still much a very much a beginner on these things but actually it's not that it's not hard to, to, to get used to it it's, it's just a slightly different feel and uh, once you get going it's a lot of fun can't believe how, how relatively few people there are on the canal this morning uh, normally when it's sunny and especially on weekends like a Saturday Sunday uh, if the weather is good you know it's not like minus 30 or whatever and this place is packed but this morning um, well it's a weekday and uh, well you can see not, not too many people which is great you know lots of space yeah so the ice conditions aren't too bad you, you can see there's some some uh, small cracks but they're really small Oh, what a beautiful view. You know, wide open space. Uh, during the summer, I uh, occasionally come out here on the canal and with my uh, kayak and go from one end to the other. A lot, of, a lot of people say that Ottawa's a boring town. And, you know, to a certain extent that's true, but it's not entirely accurate. There's lots of things to do around Ottawa, especially if you're an outdoorsy type of person. So, there's someone with figure skates who's uh, pretty good. Going at a steady clip. And I'm kind of moderately slow but I'm not in a rush or anything. So I'll give you a view once we get around past the bridge. Actually, before we get to the bridge, I just wanted to show you this. Here we got the uh, first aid center, nobody around. Uh, some sort of a kiosk that rents, I guess, skates. Uh, these are these uh, high, uh, high tech modern uh, changing rooms there that the NCC, National Capital Commission, uh, bought and installed a couple of years ago. They must have cost a billion dollars or something. And then, of course, there's the famous Ottawa Beaver Tail stand. And normally, on a Saturday, if it's sunny and there's huge crowds here, that place, there's a huge lineup in front of there. 
everybody comes out on the canal and wants some fried deep fried dough with sugar on it and uh, well this is the uh, Fifth Avenue uh, footbridge that was built uh, just in the past uh, couple of years which is a real uh, bonus for the people who live in that part of town who want to walk over to this part of town and before had to either go north or south to find some sort of way around the canal So we passed the 5th Avenue Bridge and we're moving on towards downtown but here we've got this little uh, bridge on the Glebe's, Glebe side, this is called Patterson's Creek and during the winter or the summer there's a nice uh, dock there where you can you know launch your a canoe or a canoe uh, kayak but uh, during the winter it's uh, another place where people can walk down to the ice level and put on their skates. So there's a there's a bridge, and uh, after that it's uh, closer to Center Town. So this is what it's like skating on my with my skates there. Okay. go a lot faster than I would be if I was on uh, regular hockey skates and uh, with a lot less effort you actually you know just sort of glide and push yourself off at every stride and it's pretty good you know compared to the old skates I used when I came out here so here's another stretch where uh, on this side you've got you know the, the golden what they call the the golden uh, horse horseshoe or what what ah uh, no not that's in Toronto the the golden triangle yeah where there's a lot of like embassies and uh, old really nice big uh, big uh, residential homes. And straight ahead there, you see some of the buildings from the University of Ottawa. And uh, a lot of construction going on these days. Anyways, down over there, you see there's uh, another one of them, you know, uh, changing, changing stations that... I don't know who uses those these days. <laughs> you know, they got so many benches near the stairs. It only takes a couple of moments to put on your skates. But I guess when it's really cold, everybody wants to go in. But uh, I don't know, it's probably closed due to COVID. Anyways, I've never been inside one, never never saw the, the need for it. But, uh, you know, like I said, Saturday, this place would be packed. People lining up for beaver tails. Right now it's closed and there's nobody on the ice. And I, it's like I got the world's longest ice rink to myself. Oh, I just got passed by some people with Nordic skates. Just beautiful. They got some nice modern ones there. Like mine are about 15 or so years old. Anyways, we're coming around this corner after which when we turn the corner we'll be able to see straight down to the Rito Locks at the end leading to the Ottawa River where the you know the canal ends right at the the bridge but uh, first things first is we'll get a nice view of the, the straight line there it is this is the last stretch of the Rito Canal it's the far end there, you can see this building. This is uh, National Defense Headquarters. And at the very end there, you see the, the Shadow Laurier. And, uh, well, I'll go up ahead a little bit further and then turn back so we can uh, 
get to the other end of Dow's Lake. So now we're turning around and uh, heading heading south from the downtown area past uh, the Golden Triangle to uh, well we're gonna pass the Glebe we're gonna pass the Lansdowne Park Stadium and we're gonna get to uh, the Dow's Lake there. Well under the Pretoria Bridge looks like there's a group of kids probably uh, a uh, you know a gym class at one of the local schools and uh, with COVID and stuff they can't do gym I guess and, and they're you know regular basketball or volleyball or whatever so come out here skate get some fresh air have some fun yeah so here we are on the Victoria Bridge and you can see there's not too many people around see there's a Couple of people, and that's it. So there, off in the distance, is the Fifth Avenue Bridge. There's a nice wide stretch here in the canal. So every once in a while, you see speed skate, people wearing speed skates on the canal. And uh, I've been asked, you know, what's the difference between Nordic skates and speed skates? Well, they've got the same length blade, and obviously ski speed skates are designed for, for racers to have speed. On the canal, it's a uh, benefit of speed skates is the longer blade, just like with the Nordic blades, you know, allows you to to glide over the slight imperfections a lot smoother than with the shorter blades of a hockey or figure skate. Um, but many of the old old uh, uh, speed skates have a, a boot like a hockey skate that's attached to the blade so the heel doesn't lift up. Now the more, more modern ones do have that feature with a spring you know, to snap it back into position once the blade's off the ice. But um, I think that those that are attached to the uh, the boot, attached to the blade, uh, might be a little bit more tricky to, uh, to sort of control uh, as you're skating because it's easier if the tip gets caught in a rut or something to tip over. Now, there's two Nordic skates. Beautiful. Oh, I love those. And, uh, well, you know, I mean, I've never seen anybody uh, with them on the ice, uh, with the, the speed skates on the canal fall, but I'm, I'm not, not familiar with you know what they feel like but it just seems to me that it would be a little bit more tricky than uh, obviously a uh, hockey skate uh, and uh, you know you'd have a little bit I guess less flexibility because the heel doesn't doesn't uh, you know isn't attached like on a on a Nordic blade so here we're coming around a bend and we should see on the distance, yeah, the, the spot where we originally came on, came onto the ice, and we'll keep keep going. Yeah, so here's that TD TD uh, Stadium, it used to be called like Lansdowne Park. And this is where the Ottawa CFL football team plays. This is, uh, I think, they call it the South Stand, and. Uh, yeah, it's just beside the, the Bank Street Mid Bridge. Ah. Yeah. 
Ja. So every once in a while on the, on the canal you see these signs that point out what's the distance from from the beginning. So here's a sign that says we're 4.4 kilometers from the uh, the downtown beginning of the, the canal. So we'll keep going, and uh, I think the the whole canal is 7.8 kilometers. So. Got a little, little more distance to go. Well, there we are at the 4.6 spot. And every once in a while you see a NCC truck coming along. Fortunately, they drive really slowly and on the edge. <laughs> this is one of the narrow street streaks in the uh, trips in the uh, canal so when you're canoeing down here and a big recreational motorboat goes by you gotta sort of pull over to the side and hope they're not going too fast with the waves although to be honest with you I, I often enjoy the waves when canoeing on the or kayaking on the on the bigger rivers uh, the waves uh, Add a lot of fun to the otherwise flat water experience. So here we're at 4.8 kilometers. Now we're getting around the corner here. Off in the distance we're going to see the Bronson Bridge. Where is it now? Oh, there's somebody's with Nordic skates. Watch this. Well, that guy has his system down pat, down pat, and he's turning around the corner, and we're, oh, there's another one, okay. And all over the place, these Nordic skates. See, years ago, I didn't know what that was. Now I'm, I'm one of the biggest fans. Okay, so here we are already at the 5.0 five, 5 mark. Ah, there it is. There's the Bronson Street Bridge. And beyond that is Dow's Lake. So here we are going underneath the, uh, the Bronson Street Bridge. And uh, off in the distance, straight ahead there, you can see the Arboretum, which is a big park. Nice place to walk around during the summer. Winter too, I guess, but during the summer there's dogs off leash all over the place in that place. And uh, this is uh, Dow's Lake. So what happens here is we've got this wide open space and there's a big stretch that uh, at, goes to the pavilion which during the summer is where they rent uh, paddle boats and canoes and kayaks and there's some restaurants and stuff there but uh, during the summer or winter you've got a, a strip, strip of, in the middle of the the lake that goes to the uh, to the pavilion and back, and then it, the rest of the way goes around the corner there to the left towards um, Carlton University. So let's just skate up here and see what it look looks like. 
And over here you see there's the, the beaver tails again. And probably, you know, if there wasn't COVID and if it was a nice sunny day, certainly on the weekends. This whole area is just full of people. But it's uh, first thing in the morning on a weekday. And uh, best time to go skiing. So here, here you see there's a strip this way, right in the middle of the lake that goes to the, to the pavilion. And then there's this strip coming back. So that adds another kilometer and a half or so probably to the, to the distance. And here we are. This is the, uh, the Park Arboretum that I was talking about. And we're getting close to the last, the last curve and the canal. Oh. Hey, there is a, a sign that says we're at. Uh, where is it? 7.2 kilometers from the beginning. And here's the last stretch of the canal. Right up to the lock dot locks. This is the Rio Canal. And what you see there at the end, that's one of the, uh, the Dunton Tower of Carleton University and all the buildings around there is the campus of Carleton University. So the Carleton University students can get on the canal right there and go for a skate. So this, the canal this year opened at the beginning of January and you know, it'll probably last until, you know, after family day at the end of of February uh, I don't think it's ever really carried on till the beginning of March so today's the 2nd of February and I'm gonna try to get as many skates on the canal done during the calendar it's gonna be fun Another. Uh, here we are at the uh, leaving the uh, Dow's Lake and about to go underneath the Bronson Street Bridge where the NCC has post posted this sign that this is the world's largest skating rink. La plus grande patinoire du monde. Yeah, so all those people who think Ottawa is boring, take that. Uh, here's another stretch. As we make our way back to where we started. The sign on the side says we're at the 4.8 kilometer mark. I think we've got another kilometer and a half or two to go. Look at this. Hardly anybody on the canal. This is unbelievable. I love it when this happens. Nice and quiet, you know. And it's about, it's 9.30, 9.35 on a Wednesday morning. Hey, you know, everybody's hard at work. That's what, it, that's what it is, hard at work. Yeah, I love being retired. <laughs> so there's the Bank Street Bridge up ahead. Couple of people coming on the, the canal. Couple more over there. Yep. Yeah. 
So, we're uh, coming up to the place where we left off. So that was basically uh, a skate on the canal. I guess I did about uh, over five, maybe five and a half, uh, at least five kilometers this morning. And, uh, you know, I remember years ago when I tried it with my hockey skates at the end, I was exhausted. But with these Nordic skates, I uh, go a lot faster uh, with uh, what seems to me to be less less effort, uh, exertion. Uh, there goes another Nordic skater. This guy is just going back and forth. I've seen him several times now, so he's uh, getting in his pre pre Olympic trial runs and. Uh, yeah, so we're going back to where we came on. And I got my my shoes and my backpack, my boots, and uh, we'll just take them off and then walk up the steps, go to the car, and go home. And this is the joy of winter in Ottawa when the canal's open. Hope you'd like the video. Bye.